Hey guys, it's Miss Carrie France here, and I'm doing the virtual faith enrichment video for this week. So last week, Miss Kim Bowes talked to you about Lent, and I'm going to continue to talk about Lent and maybe give you some ideas that you can do with your family at home during Lent to help you understand why we do the things that we do during Lent. It helps us um, get a better relationship with God, right? So I'm going to give you some ideas that may uh, help you with that. So, Ms. Kim talked about Lent being 40 days and why it's 40 days. She also talked about the color violet or purple, which is what you see on the altar cloth in church. And purple represents penance. Penance is the act that you do to um, seal your relationship with God. It brings you closer to God. You may have heard the word penance if you're older and you've been to confession. And then the priest... Um, afterwards, we'll give you what's called a penance. It could be prayers or uh, works of charity, works of mercy. And that penance is what seals back the relationship with God. Also during Lent, we um, do three things. We fast, we do what's almsgiving or giving, and we pray more. And the reason we do these things is, again, to work towards that closer relationship with God. Now, how many of you gave up something for Lent? I did, and you will not believe what I gave up. I gave up complaining. And let me tell you, it's been hard. You don't realize how much you complain when you try not to. But let me tell you, it's it, as hard as it's been, I've really had to think about all the good in my life and not having to dwell on the things that are really small. They're really small and insignificant. But if I complain about them, I'm actually pushing God away because I forget all of my blessings in my life. And so for me, I gave up complaining. I haven't been 100% perfect, but I did it so that I would refocus on the good things and the blessings in my life. So what are you giving up for Lent? Well, as a family, I would suggest that maybe the things you could give up are like the times you watch TV, maybe Netflix, or you're playing video games, and replace that time with maybe prayer, or sometimes you can even replace it with silence, because how do we hear God's voice when we have all these noises in the background, right? You've got guns going off on video games, you've got... Um, noises from Super Mario Brothers or you're watching something on Netflix and people are talking, music's playing. Well, when God's speaking to you during those moments, how can you hear him? So what I would suggest for you as a family is to take a step back from some of those things and maybe pray a decade of the rosary together or just have silence. Just say, hey, we're going to sit here for 10 minutes. Unplug the Wi-Fi if you have to. Sit here for just 10 minutes and just let God speak to you. That's a great way to just reconnect and refocus as a family with God. Now, I know some of you probably gave up candy for Lent, and that's a good one because when you're a kid, like candy's like your whole life, right? Gosh, I love chocolate, gummy bears. My kids love Sour Patch Kids. And so if they had to give that up, it would be kind of rough. Well, you know how you really love candy and you really want candy? So you go to the movies or you go to the grocery store and all oh, that candy's just staring at you, but it's Lent and you gave it up and you're like, oh my gosh, I want some candy, mom, but I can't have it. Well, guess what? God wants you to want him the same way you want that candy. And so by giving up Netflix, video games, or candy, you're replacing that with God. And again, God wants you to love him as much as you love gummy bears, as much as my kids love Sour Patch Kids. And so think about that as a family when you're talking about Lent and things that you're wanting to give up or things you're wanting to add or make changes. It's those small things that just have a giant result, right? So we give up candy and we replace that with God's love, right? Because by wanting that candy, I want God. I want God to bring me just as much joy as that candy brings me. 
Now, a lot of people look at Lent and they think oh, it's a punishment, right? I have to give up stuff. I feel like I'm just, you know, a bad person because I have to reflect or look at all these things and I have to, you know, find all the things I do wrong and give them up. Well, that's, that's not what <laughs> Lent's about. Lent is about, yes, looking at yourself and, and giving up some things, but the joy, the celebration of Lent is reconnecting with God because it ultimately leads up to what? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, he died on the cross for us on Good Friday, but what comes on Sunday? The resurrection on Easter Sunday. And what a glorious, glorious moment for us, for him to be resurrected. And so when you look at Lent, I want you to think about Jesus going through the desert for 40 days. If you haven't heard that Bible story, then maybe mom or dad can look it up for you and, and tell you about it. But Jesus wanders in the desert for 40 days, not because he's punishing himself, but because he's preparing himself. He's preparing himself to lead up to the crucifixion and then ultimately his resurrection. And while he's in the desert, man, he's thirsty, he's hungry, he's sweating, he's dirty. But his focus, everything he does is centered on God. God, I offer you these things. I'm so hungry, God. It's just like you in the grocery store, Mom. God, I really want those Sour Patch Kids. But I'm going to offer that up, and I'm going to ask God for help. So when Jesus was in the desert, he was tempted by Satan three times. Now, he knew that was coming, and the humanity or the human part of Jesus really had a hard time. And so he called upon his father. He called upon God to come and help him. And that's what we should do is we call upon God anytime we're suffering, anytime we just have that ache in our stomach and we're like, oh, this is so miserable. This is so terrible. Call upon God to help you. So when Satan tempted Jesus those three times, one time he offered him bread and water and he said, here, I'll give you this. And all you have to do is worship me. And Jesus said, no, no, I don't want it. Because what feeds me is God's word. What feeds me is my father. Then Satan said, well, if you're God and you're almighty, then throw yourself off this cliff and, and see if God and the angels will rescue you. And Jesus said, no, 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 I'm not doing that because I don't test my God. I have enough faith and love for my God that I know he is going to take care of me. And so I'm not going to throw myself off a cliff just to see if he loves me because I already know that he loves me. And then the third thing Satan did to Jesus, just the, the nerve of Satan, he says, if you will bow down and worship me, I will make you a God. And Jesus Christ said, uh-uh, buddy, there is only one God. God the Father, and it ain't you. And so because Jesus was faithful, at the end of the 40 days, he came out of the desert, and he didn't fall for those temptations. And so I'm telling you this story because when you see the video games that you want to give up, when you see the shows you want to watch instead of maybe praying with your family, when you see the candy at the movie theater or the grocery store, I just want you to think of what Jesus went through. And I want you to say, uh-uh, not today, not me, because I'm faithful to my God. And I'm giving these things up so that I will call out for help from God and he will help me. I know he's going to help me. So don't test. Don't, just because those Sour Patch Kids or on that aisle staring at you doesn't mean you have to get them. Doesn't mean you have to eat them. So think about that when you're at the, when you're with your family at the grocery store, or when you see things that you're tempted to do, tempted to watch, tempted to play those video games. Even though you said you committed, you said I'm not going to do these things during Lent because I want more of God. Then don't fall for it. That Xbox, that PS5 is not your God. 
God is in heaven, right? So don't let it become your God. Don't let it be your center. Don't let it draw you in. God wants to draw you in. He's reaching out his hand right now and he's saying, I want to help you. So remember that when you're with your family, when you're talking about Lent, what are things that pull you away? You know, you don't have to give up everything. I'm not saying you don't ever have to, don't ever play video games, don't ever eat candy. But what I'm asking you to do is to think of the things that maybe bring you joy, but they consume so much of your time that they that you don't have time for God. I can't tell you the number of people I run into at work that tell me, I don't have time to pray. Well, if you don't have time to pray, you're just too busy. Make the time. How do you have a relationship with God if you're not praying to him, if you're not talking to him? And how is he talking to you and you're not listening, right? So think about all of these things when you're looking at Lent and talk with your parents about, you know, what can we start today? You still have time. We're only in the third week of Lent, so you've got plenty of time. You can start over or maybe find something new because the first thing you thought about didn't work out very well. So start over. There's always time. So at home with your family during Lent, this is what I want you to do. Pray more because that's what the Catholic Church teaches about during the season of Lent, is that we should pray more, we should give more, or we use the word almsgiving, which that can be, you know, given money to the poor or given time. As Ms. Kim talked about last week, you can maybe collect some canned goods and give them to the food bank, or you can give to St. Vincent de Paul. Ms. Joanne Crone is always needing things and needing help. And I know she would love to hear from you as far as if you want to maybe give something to St. Vincent de Paul, she would love that. And the third thing is fasting. So remember, we don't eat meat on Fridays. We don't eat meat on Ash Wednesday or on Good Friday, but also fast from things to allow more time for God. So if you don't, let's say your family hasn't been going to mass because of COVID, Maybe try going to Mass one Sunday during Lent. That's something you can add, but you're also giving up what you would regularly be doing on a Sunday morning, whereas, you know, I don't know what that is, but you can say, you know what, instead of sleeping till 10, why don't we get up an hour early and go to, go to Mass? What a difference it will make in your family just giving those small bits and pieces to Jesus Christ. So thank you all so much for your time. And if you ever have any questions about Lent, if you're like, oh, Miss Carrie, this is just so much information, I hear you. You know, I'm always up at the church. You can always ask me questions if you want to. Ask your parents questions. Read your Bible. Go to church and pray. Okay, those are the three key things. And I want you to keep doing them if you're doing them. And I want you to start doing them if you're not doing them. Okay? All right. Well, we're going to end in a prayer. And thank you all so much for your time. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for allowing me to give this time to these children this week and these families. I hope that you just keep encouraging and motivating everyone to just give to you, God, because you're so good. You're just so good to all of us. And I ask for St. Joseph to pray for us. I ask for Mary to pray for us. And I ask that you bring these families together just like the Holy Family was together. St. Joseph, protect us, pray for us. Mary, protect us, pray for us. In your name I pray, amen. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. One thing I'm going to add before I get off is my son made me this cross out of Legos. So if you're looking for, if you have Legos, you're looking for something to do for Lent, make your mama a cross. My son did, and I love it. It's on my desk every day. Well, Y'all have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.